All right, so this statistics stuff is very much related to the probability stuff, okay? Uh, if you look at the experimental probabilities that we did, it's still, it, it kind of is like a statistic because based on what happened, we can make a, an assumption or a prediction on what could happen, okay? So, a survey's a way of collecting information. That would be like performing the experiment. And the grouping studies is the population, okay? So whatever the results are, or whoever you are performing this survey on would be the population. So, so for example, uh, for example, a population we could say is, uh, let's look at the district, all the students in Alpine School District. A sample of that population would be the population of Mountain Ridge Junior High students. Okay, so that is a population, but it's a sample of Alpine School District. We can go even deeper and say, let's look at ninth graders at Mount Ridge Junior High. Uh, then we would be in a sample of the population, which would be Mount Ridge Junior High, okay, because we're just looking at ninth graders. And we can go deeper into uh, genders and... Uh, maybe sports that they play or uh, hair color or something like that. All right, so those would be populations. So let's look at this example. We've got these uh, determine which set represents population and which is a sample of a population, okay? Okay, so we have the students in a middle school. Uh, that, that would be everyone in the school, okay? So that's a population. Seventh graders in the middle school would be a sample of the middle school, okay? Uh, the customers at an ice cream shop in the town, okay, that's a very specific group there. They're customers at the ice cream shop, which is also in the town, so that is definitely a sample. The residents of a town, so that's looking at a larger group. That is definitely a population there. Now, again, the size sometimes won't make a difference. It's depend it depends on how it's stated. The residents of a town would be a population if we were to compare that to the residents of a state or a country. All right, so Logan wants to survey students in his school about their favorite and least favorite ice cream flavors. Describe a possible sample Logan could survey instead of surveying the entire school. Okay, so, um, and we'll find out that there's different ways to manipulate the data uh, so that it uh, can come out in our favor or uh, unfavorable to someone else, okay? But for now, we're just looking for different ways that Logan can survey, uh, create a survey that would not go through the entire school. So he could look at uh, just science classes. He could look at just a grade. He could survey only uh, every fifth student that walks through the door. He could go to the lunch line and survey every other student. He could survey only students who are shorter than six feet tall. You see, there are many different ways that Logan could survey uh, which would not include the entire school. Uh, maybe in our school you could consider that Logan would survey only the students who have lockers in B Hall, for example, okay, in addition to all the other ones. All right, so here's another example. The students in Mr. Blackwell's class brought photos from their summer break table shows how many students brought each type of photo. So you got beaches, campgrounds, home, and theme parks. So what's the probability? So again, referring back to probability, based on uh, the results of the photos, what's the probability that a student brought a photo taken at a theme park? So we do need the total number of photos that were brought, okay? So if we add all these together, it looks like we'll end up with uh, 28 total photos, okay? So when we look at probability as a fraction, it's going to be out of 28. What's the probability that they brought a photo taken at a theme park? Well, that's this one right here. 
and it looks like there were 11 of them. So 11 out of 28, you can turn that into a percentage or a decimal if you choose. All right, so let's look at this next part. There are 560 students at the school. Predict how many students would bring a photo taken at a theme park. This is going to bring up a proportion, okay? So we saw in the last example that there were 11 out of 28, okay? What we want to know here is how many students would bring a photo from a theme park because these students brought one from a theme park. We want to know or predict how many would bring one from a theme park, okay, because 28 is the total, which is on the bottom. This 560 must be a total number of students, because it says, okay. There are 560 students at the school, so that would be total students at the school. So we've compared these properly. Now all I need to do is incorporate a fishy method, uh, and that would give me 560 times 11 divided by 28, which is it's about 220 students that are going that you would expect uh, to bring a photo from a theme park. And yeah, we do need to label that students, okay? There you go. Now this number is not exact, so uh, you probably got something a little bit different than that. Maybe there's a decimal, but again, these are students. We should only be bringing full students with us in terms of bringing a photo taken at a theme park. All right, so be careful with this one because there's quite a few numbers here, but only a few of them are really important, okay? This tells us that 3 out of every 10, that's a fraction right there, 3 out of 10, okay? Uh, well, let's write that down as we have. 3 out of every 10 students aged 6 to 14 have a magazine subscription. So again, the 6 to 14 is just the age group. It doesn't really matter there, okay? So, suppose there are 30 students in Annabelle's class. So, there are 30 students. About how many will have a magazine subscription? Well, we would want to know that. And if there's 3 out of every 10, then from here, this is proportional. So, we just write it's equal. And we use the fishy method, which would tell us that there should be about 9 nine students will have a magazine subscription. Now, I'm not going to require that you write all that down. Nine students will work. Setting up the proportion, though, is a whole different matter. Okay, Remember, there's eight different ways we can write a proportion. This is one of them. And, of course, I just based it directly out of what was given to us and how it was given. Um, and then if I can say that there's nine students, uh, yeah, we just know that there's nine students that have magazine subscription because it asked for that in the question. All right, so let's look at this question. A survey found that six out of every ten students have a blog. What is the probability that a student at the school has a blog? Well, it told us right here, 6 out of every 10. So for A, I'm just going to bring that down. For A, it's just 6 out of 10. You can simplify this if you choose. It would be 3 fifths. And you can write the decimal or the percentage as well. Now suppose there are 250 students at the school. About how many have a blog? So we will need a proportion here. 6 out of 10 have a blog, according to the survey. So this wants to know out of 250 students, how many will have a blog? Okay, again, we know this because 6 of them have blogs. This one, we don't know how many have blogs, and they have to correspond directly across here. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. And you can just use your fishy method. 250 times 6 divided by 10. And it looks like the answer to this will be 150 of those 250 students will have a blog. So yeah, we do need to label that. It wouldn't be 150 blogs. It wants to know about how many students have a blog. And it looks like it'll be 150. All right, let's look at A. So about 300,000 teens live in Virginia, so this other stuff really doesn't matter. This is, this is all the information that we need. It's the team, teens that volunteer in Virginia. And what we need to do next is predict the number of teens in this age group who volunteer a few times a year. Well, we can see from the pie chart that it's talking about this piece right here which it tells us is 20%, okay? So if there are, if this whole thing is 300,000 teens, okay, so there's a couple ways we can do this. And let's look at the proportion way first, all right? So we know it's 100 here. It told us a percent was 20, and it's a total of 300,000 teens. So what we would need to do is solve for x here by using the switching, uh, not the switch and stay game, but the fishing method. So you got 300,000 times 20 divided by 100. And it looks like that'll be uh, 60,000 teens, okay, because we do need to label this. So 60,000 teens volunteer a few times a year, okay, now that's the first way. The other way is just to take the percent, 0.2. Uh, yes, we do need this as a decimal. That's 20% right here. And we'll go ahead and multiply that by the number of students because it's 20% of 300,000. So of is the key word there to multiply. And that'll give you the same answer as 60,000 teens. Okay, the second question is talking about Tennessee, but again, we're going to use the same pie chart. The ages don't matter. Predict the number of teens in this age group who volunteer once a week. Okay, so let's identify where that is. That's this big piece here, once a week. That's 29%, okay? I will go ahead and use the proportion because it's easier for me to see what's happening. You got 100 there. The percent goes above it. And there are 250,000 total teens there in Tennessee. What we want to know is how many of them, how many of those 250,000 teens volunteer once a week. Well, to do that, we're just going to use the old fishy method. So you got 250,000 times 29 divided by 100. There's a 72,500 teens. Uh, from Tennessee, who volunteer once a week.